Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Chemical Process Design, Design Basis Part 1 In this video course, you will learn what is the need for chemical process design, what is the design basis, why is it important, what are the various design aspects covered? Design basis part 1. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce knowledgeable video content for you. So, subscribe now before you forget. A chemical process plant is a production asset designed and built for conversion of raw material into finished products. To be successful, the plant must operate and generate a reasonable profit, meeting the safety and environmental requirement. From the initial idea of starting a business venture called concept stage till commissioning and commencement of commercial production, the setting up of a chemical process plant goes through a series of stages. This series of stages is collectively called project phase. The process design of a chemical process plant is an important and interesting phase of the project. Several innovative ideas get crystallized into action in this phase. Design need, who needs it and why he needs it. The need for design may originate from two initiatives on the part of the owner or the client. One, it may arise from the client's intention to set up a new plant to manufacture a chemical product based on favorable supply demand gap. Two, it may arise from the management of an existing plant who intends to increase the plant capacity due to growing demand for their products. There may be several process technologies, also called process route, which can be used most economically to convert the field stock to the finished products. Also, there may be alternative raw material or field stock to produce the same product at competitive cost. But the owner of the plant selects the best technology available to use a locally or easily available feedstock. So the key to success of the venture lies in the selection of 1. Process technology 2. The right feedstock 3. Favorable site location 4. Plant size or capacity the key technology metrics include operational efficiency, energy efficiency, and environmental friendliness. Once these are decided and the project proposal is approved by the client, the project execution commences. The project goes through three phases of execution, engineering phase, procurement phase, and construction phase. Upon completion of construction, the plant goes into commissioning phase followed by operational phase. The most important phase is the design phase. Before the actual process design begins, the process licensor in discussion with the client freezes the basis of design. This is an important document that set the design process rolling. Shown below is the design cycle. After the plant is commissioned and operation is stabilized at rated production capacity, any design discrepancy against design basis is analyzed and if modification in design in any part of the plant is required, it is implemented. The cycle repeats till the plant operates as per the original design basis. If you are a chemical engineer, irrespective of your job role, you must read through the BOD document and understand on what basis the plant has been designed. It gives you an insight into several important aspects of the design. If you are ready, let us move on. Process Plant Design Basis 
This is the first document to be delivered by the process licensor to the client. The delivery of the document follows the formal approval of the project by the client. This is a contractual document called Process Design Memorandum. The purpose of this document is to give a detailed description of the production facilities to be constructed and the process design basis for the same. For example, the client intends to set up a plant for manufacture of 100,000 metric tons per annum of allyl chloride, a petrochemical product. The plant will have the main process plant to produce allyl chloride and support facilities which include the utilities and common facilities such as raw material storage, product storage, flash system, etc. Accordingly, the design base will include those for the main process plant and the support facilities. The design basis for the process plant includes the following. 1. The products to be produced. 2. The technology to manufacture the product. 3. The location of the facilities. The process licensor provides the design basis for the process plant only. For the support facilities, the design basis is developed and provided by the detailed engineering consultant. In general, the process design basis document covers several aspects of the plant design which include standards to be followed, how the PFD, detailed material balance, utility balance and P and AD will be prepared, product, feedstock and utility specifications and bed limit conditions, design consideration for the pressure vessels used in the process plant, utilities and offset facilities, safety and environment related design considerations. Design basis part 1. In part 1 you will get an insight into some of the design aspects mentioned above. One, codes and standards. This covers the codes and national and international standards used for the design, engineering, equipment and package units. Equipments include pressure vessels, towers, heat exchangers, rotating equipment like pumps and compressors, reactors and piping. There are several codes and standards covering all of this. For pressure vessels, the most important codes for design, construction and testing is American Society of Mechanical Engineers ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code. The pressure containing components called pressure pots may be required by law to meet the requirements of these codes. The objectives of the rules are to assure reasonable protection to life and property and to provide adequate margin for deterioration in service. These rules do not provide criteria for thermal performance. Instead, set minimum guidelines for structural integrity to ensure safe operation during the expected equipment life. Following the codes will ensure development of safe pressure design. The same is the case with other process equipment such as heat exchangers, reactors, rotating equipment, storage tank, etc., where codes such as API and TMA are used. It is not possible to cover all the standards in this video. Some of the codes and standards used for design, fabrication and testing of pressure vessel, storage tank, heaters, heat exchangers, rotating equipment, piping are given in the table below. Pressure vessels, ASME pressure vessel code section 8, division 1 or 2. Storage tanks, API 650 for welded steel tanks for oil storage. API 620, design and construction of large low pressure welded tanks. Heaters, API 560, fired heater for general refinery service. Heat exchangers, TMA class R. Boiler, ASME Boiler and Pressure Cell Code, Section 1. 
pumps for hydrocarbon servers, APA 610 centrifugal pumps. Pumps for general service, ASME B73.1 specification for horizontal end section pump. Piping system, ASME B31.3 chemical and petroleum piping. Two, unit swap measure. This relates to the design parameters provided in the design documents. Unit swap measure is usually MKS units. Three, equipment identification and numbering. This is required to identify the equipment in the process design documents, such as equipment and instrument data sheets and drawings like PFD and PNID. The project specific format is developed and the format is followed across the process design package. Four, process flow diagram, PFD. This part of the design basis relates to the information to be shown in the PFD. This includes the major equipment name and their number, stream number, stream conditions such as pressure and temperature of the streams entering and leaving, heat duties of heat exchangers, etc. The figure below shows a typical PFD with information shown. This base will be followed for the PFDs in the process facilities. Only the data shown on the equipment vary from equipment to equipment. This is because functionally each equipment is different. For example, for towers, the temperature and pressure at the top and temperature at the bottom will be shown. For fixed but catalytic reactors, temperature and pressure at the top and bottom will be shown. For vessels and drums, temperature and pressure will be shown. Tray column will be represented with the topmost tray numbered 1. Capacity and differential pressure for the pumps and compressors will be shown. Fired heaters and heat exchangers duties will be indicated in the PFD as shown in the previous figure. 5. Plant operating hours per year. Another important basis of design is the operating hours per year. Process plants are designed to operate for 8000 hours per year. Six material balance. The material balance is shown separate from the PFD. Material balance will correspond to the stream number shown in the PFD. The material balance will be based on 8,000 operating hours per year. If the annual production capacity is 100,000 metric ton per year, the available production capacity is calculated as 100,000 divided by 8,000, which is equal to 12.5 metric ton per hour. The information or process data in the material balance will be as shown in the table below. The process information include the steam number and the unit submission. Under the steam number, the data given are the steam name, phase of the stream, components flow rate, molecular weight, temperature, pressure, and physical and thermodynamic properties, including density, viscosity, surface tension, and thermal conductivity. In case the stream is two-phase, then flow rate of both liquid and vapor phase will be shown. Seven, it will be a summary and balance. Utility summary will include the following steam and condensate, cooling water, demineralized water, nitrogen, fuel, and electricity. 8. Piping and instrumentation diagram PNID. This is usually the same as the standard used in the chemical power industries. However, Project specific requirement will be specified in the design basis. 
Some of the project specific data shown in the PNID include pipeline specifications, insulation requirement, types of insulation, size and location of spectacle blinds, PSV isolation valves, spare PSV if needed for maintenance during plant running. Then, Utilities Flow Diagram UFD. Utility flow diagram is constructed for steam, condensate, and cooling water. For example, the cooling water balance for a typical plant is as shown in the figure below. Observe the supply and return flows are balanced. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of carry over and professional students. Thank you for watching.